Okay, so I'm uh, Tom DeMars from the University of Minnesota Duluth, and I was looking at the tensile and shear capacity of post-installed GFRP bars in concrete. So a little bit of uh, background in post-installed bars. Um, essentially, a post-installed reinforcing bar is a reinforcing bar installed into a hole that's drilled into existing concrete, and then it's secured into the hole with an adhesive. Um, so this can provide several benefits. Uh, the biggest one is high design flexibility, and it can allow for things like column extensions, slab to slab connections, and wall extensions, uh, really just building the ability to build off of an existing concrete structure. So with post-installed reinforcing bars and GFRP reinforcing bars, there's kind of two codes of interest. Uh, first is ACI 318, which uh, provides uh, provisions for anchoring to concrete in chapter 17, but those provisions are only applicable to steel reinforcing bars. Whereas ACI 440 uh, kind of provides some background and basic design for structural reinforced concrete that's reinforced with GFRP reinforcing bars, but it doesn't include similar provisions to ACI 318 for anchoring to concrete. So GFRP reinforcing bars are basically reinforcing bars that have continuous longitudinal fibers that carry the majority of the load and they're surrounded by a resin that kind of binds and protects those fibers. Uh, and they have several benefits uh, such as a higher tensile strength and fatigue resistance when compared to steel. And they're also, also corrosion resistant, lightweight and non-magnetic and of the current FRP reinforcing bar types that exist, they have the lowest cost. So there's a variety of uses for GFRP reinforcing bars, but some of the more common applications are in um, harsh environments like bridges or marine structures where you might have moisture or chlorides. And then in places like medical facilities where you might have magnetic machinery such as MRI machines, and you'd like your structural reinforcement to be non-magnetic. So the goal of this research was to determine the behavior of post-installed GFRP reinforcing bars subjected to both tensile and shear loading, and also to determine if the ACI 318 provisions for anchoring to concrete were suitable to use with post-installed GFRP reinforcing bars. So to accomplish this, uh, we con constructed and tested different specimens that contain both steel and GFRP reinforcing bars. And we compared those results directly to each other and to predictions made using chapter 17 of ACI 318. So in the lab, we ran several types of tests, uh, which you can see in these photos here. The first was a confined uh, tension test away from concrete edges uh, where you have a steel plate confining the concrete and forcing some kind of pullout failure of the bar. Uh, the next was an unconfined tension test away from concrete edges pictured here, which allows for a concrete breakout cone to form. And the third was the same as that unconfined tension test, but the bars were installed on the corner of a concrete slab. And finally, we tested the direct shear strength of GFRP and steel reinforcing bars away from concrete edges. So some of the variables we tested, uh, we kept our concrete compressive strength the same at about 3,500 PSI for all specimens. Uh, we essentially had a constant embedment depth, which only changed based on bar size. So for number five bars, that was three inches. And for number eight bars, that was four inches. Uh, we tested GFRP bars from two different manufacturers, and then we tested steel bars. And we used the same uh, industry standard Hilti adhesive throughout. So here's a little summary of what we did in the lab. You can see that this test series one and four are essentially the same test, just run on different bar sizes, number five versus number eight. Uh, similarly, number two test series and five test series are the same, just varied based on bar size. And then this test series three was where the bars were installed in a corner condition. And we did not test any steel bars in that test. 
And finally, we only tested number five bars in shear, but we did include steel bars. So once we ran all the tests and collected data, we made uh, several statistical comparisons. Um, first, we compared the experimental ultimate loads directly to each other. So we did that in two ways. First, by just comparing the ratios of the average ultimate loads, and then by running t-tests with unequal variance, um, which were two-tailed, so we could capture uh, any difference on either side of the mean. We used a 5% uh, percent significance level. So we compared both of the GFRP reinforcing bars to the steel bars, and then we compared the GFRP bars to each other. And the next uh, kind of set of statistics that we, we, we ran um, were comparing the experimental ultimate loads to capacities predicted using the ACI 318 predicted uh, capacities. So these had to be delineated by failure mode as the predictions in ACI 318 are also delineated by failure mode. So the first comparison we made was the average ultimate load from the experiments reduced by three standard deviations to incorporate 99% of the normal distribution. And that was compared to the predicted capacity. And then the characteristic value, which is also known as the 5% fractal, which is a value with a chance, 95% chance of being exceeded with a confidence of 90% was also compared to the uh, predicted capacity. So uh, the direct comparisons of confined tensile tests, we found that for number five reinforcing bars, uh, the capacities of the GFRP reinforcing bars were statistically different and lower than the steel. Uh, but for number eight reinforcing bars, one was not uh, statistically different than steel, whereas one was, and it was lower. Um, and one issue we ran into during testing was for some of the number five GFRP reinforcing bars, um, they failed due to anchor rupture, which you can see in this picture here, which happened right at the interface of this hydraulic cylinder and the wedge used to hold the bar. And it's kind of a well-known thing that stress concentrations can form around points of anchorage in GFRP reinforcing bars, which can cause premature failure. So that was um, an issue we ran into during testing. So these are um, the results of comparisons to the predicted capacities for the confined tensile tests. Uh, green box indicates an acceptable ratio, which is just greater than one. And you can also see some say insufficient SS, which just means there wasn't enough data uh, to make a st statistical comparison because we had to delineate by failure mode. So you can see for both the GFRP bars, um, they failed in bond and anchor rupture, whereas just the steel bars just failed due to a bond failure. So all the steel bars were acceptable when compared to the ACI uh, predicted capacities, whereas the only GFRP bar that was acceptable was when it failed in bond failure and was a number five reinforcing bar. So for unconfined tensile tests, um, direct comparisons to each other, um, we found no statistical difference between the GFRP bars and the steel. Um, and we believe this is likely due to the fact that we used relatively low strength concrete. Um, so the concrete strength was the main influencing factor on the unconfined tensile strength. And for all of the bars tested in this series, you can see this was the failure mode, uh, which is called a concrete breakout where a cone kind of forms from the bottom of the reinforcing bar and extends out and up to the surface of the concrete. So when we predict or compared those values um, to the ACI 318 predicted capacities, we found that they were all acceptable. They all failed to concrete breakout or due to concrete breakout. And we didn't have any issues like we did with the confined tensile tests. And then finally, with our shear tests, uh, when we directly compared the GFRP and steel, uh, the GFRP was actually pretty significantly statistically different and lower in its capacity than steel. Um, one thing that we noticed was the GFRP bars uh, experienced anchor rupture, which is pictured here, 
where the bars failed right at the interface of the concrete and this shear loading plate, which was applying the shear load to the bars, whereas the steel formed a concrete breakout cone and shear where the bar was still intact and this kind of triangular piece of concrete ripped out from the, from the concrete block. So this was um, expected because GFRP bars just have weak um, shear capacity because they don't have any fibers oriented transversely. So their, their shear capacity is kind of, it's basically dependent on the resin rather than the fibers, which are the strongest part of the bar. And when we compared all of these values to the predicted capacities of ACI 318, um, the GFRP bars had a pretty significantly low ratio, but the steel also was not an acceptable ratio. So this is kind of suggesting that the ACI provisions might be unconservative for anchoring to concrete in shear. And throughout testing, um, as I mentioned earlier with the confined tests, one issue you ran into was stress concentrations at the point of anchorage. So in future testing, a, a recommendation would be to limit those stress concentrations. Um, one way to do that is to cast grout around the bar, which is pictured here, and then also have some kind of pipe around that grout, um, and then have your grip on, on the pipe so you're not getting all of that force directly into the bar. Um, and then just generally for future testing, expanding the test variables and parameters surrounding additional types of tests rather than just the confined, unconfined and shear tests and running those tests in both cracked and uncracked concrete uh, because our tests were just run in uncracked concrete. And then just expanding uh, the number of reinforcing bar sizes tested uh, testing GFRP reinforcing bars from a variety of manufacturers and installing those bars uh, with a variety of different adhesives. And then just varying embedment depths and concrete compressive strengths. And then finally, looking at ACI 318 versus ACI 440 and some of those design differences that, that exist between designing steel reinforcing bars and designing with GFRP reinforcing bars and how those differences might affect future provisions for anchoring to concrete with GFRP reinforcing bars. Any questions? Thank you, Thomas, for the presentation. And I have a question uh, regarding the, the presentation, and is that, so you have focused on number five and number eight bars to compare, right? Correct. So what is your expectation, like insight about like a lower size members for comparison or higher size members, higher than eight, lower than five? What do you think would be, how you can compare these two? What do you think is going to happen? From just from reading, um, I know that in larger size bars, it kind of, the stress concentrate, it's hard to, it's hard to explain. Basically, I think in larger size bars, you're going to see less of a difference between the steel and the GFRP. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, but that's kind of what's been observed in past, in past experiments. And also, I was just having one question before your recommendation slide. And when you showed, I was like, all right, the question probably is answered there. And it is about the concrete compressive strength to be different. Uh, if you do like a new research and you want to do like a, uh, with, with the different variables, one of them to be the compressive strength of concrete, if it is to be higher, something around and hovering around like a six KSI. So do you think that, uh, failure mode of like a breakout or, or those like, a, uh, the observation you made, do you think the failure mode would be different using the same scenario, everything the same, except the compressive strength of concrete? To be higher. Yeah, so I'll jump back to this slide. I would kind of expect that if you had a higher compressive strength and you're running, uh, let's say those those unconfined tests where you see a concrete breakout failure, I would expect that as you increase the compressive strength, you'll see more and more of this anchor rupture in the GFRP bars, but happening at the interface of the concrete down here. Still because of the stress concentration at that point. Because yeah. of the All right. Thank you, Thomas.